If you're still kind of new to knitting, you have the basics down and you want to experiment a little bit with more interesting stitches, a simple lace stitch like the one in this cowl is a really great place to start. I love it for first time lace knitting projects because the repeat is so simple. The step-by-step -step tutorial is coming up. Okay, so real quick, for this project, I'm working with Lion Brand Summer Kiss Yarn, a newer cotton polyester blend to their lineup, and I'm loving it so far. You'll also need a pair of US 7 knitting needles. I'm using a 32 inch cord, but you can work this on 24 inch or larger circulars, and you can even make it work with straight needles if you prefer. All right, to start this one off, get a nice long tail and gather it up in your hands like this. We'll work the long tail cast on for this project, and if you're a seasoned knitter, go ahead and cast on 79 stitches. For those of you that are a little newer to this, swing it down to catch the loop on your thumb, swing it up to catch the loop on your finger, and then drop your thumb loop over the tip of the needle. And keep going like that until you have 79 stitches on your needle. When you have all 79 stitches cast on your needle, flip it and we're ready to work the first row. This one is really simple. For row one, we'll purl every stitch. So insert the needle purlwise, gather up the yarn and purl the first stitch. Then keep going, purl every stitch. Now, although this row is really simple and easy to memorize, the best way to follow along with this tutorial is to have the pattern in front of you too. You can view it for free on my website, or if you prefer to have a copy in hand to print or save for later, you can buy the PDF from my shop. I'll have a link to both of those options in the description below. Okay, when you're finished with the first row, flip it and we'll pick up on row two. Now this one is really simple as well, but this time instead of purling every stitch, we'll knit every stitch. So the stitch pattern in this cowl is made up of four rows. Three of those four are really simple, just like this. And one row is what I'll call the lace row, which takes a little more focus to work than the other three, but it's not difficult by any means. We're not there yet, but we will be soon. So continue knitting to finish up your second row. When you reach the end of your second row, go ahead and turn it and we'll start on row three. Now row three is the same as row one. You'll purl every stitch. So what we've done here is we've created some stockinette rows. So when you finish that third row and flip it, you'll see that familiar stockinette stitch pattern. And this is what separates the lace rows. We'll start next. Okay, for this row, row number four, you'll always knit the first stitch. Then knit two together. So insert your needle in the next two stitches and knit them as if they were one.
Then do that once more. Now bring the yarn forward like you're going to purl, but knit the next stitch instead. And do that two more times. Yarn forward and knit. Yarn forward and knit. Then bring the yarn forward once more and knit two together. Next, knit two together three times with the yarn in back, just as you normally would. And this is where our repeat begins. We'll yarn forward and knit three times. Then yarn forward and knit two together. And finally, knit two together three times. So anytime you have the yarn forward, that yarn over creates the little holes that you see in the lace pattern. It's a staple for lace knitting, so it's a really good stitch to know and get comfortable with. So keep going with that repeat until you reach the last eight stitches. Then yarn forward and knit three times. Yarn forward and knit two together. Then knit two together. And knit the last stitch. Now for our lace pattern, rows one through four are the repeat. So we've just finished our fourth row. We're gonna start over again with row number one. So flip your work and remember this one is all purl stitches. So when you get to those yarn overs, it'll feel really weird and loose to purl. That's completely normal. You're not doing anything wrong there. Just do the best you can. The perfectionist in me really struggled with this at first because it felt really loose and really sloppy. But if you're kind of feeling this way too, just know it'll look great in the end, especially with that extra blocking step. Next, flip your work and repeat row two, which remember is to knit every stitch. Another thing to note is your purl rows are the wrong side of the work, so that'll help keep you on track. Okay, I finished rows one through three, which means I have my lace row next. It'll probably take you several repeats to memorize the stitches, so it's a really good idea to keep the pattern in front of you until you really have it nailed down. I also found myself reciting the stitches in my head to help keep me on track.
Now, when you work the repeat several times, it'll look something like this. Now, don't worry if your stitches look a little crunched. That's totally normal. We'll correct that later with blocking. And when you reach the end of your first skein of yarn, I find it easiest to pick up on the new one on the edge. So grab your new skein and set yourself up to knit the next row in your repeat, whatever your next row is. Here I happened to run out as I was running into a lace row. But no matter which row you're going into when you need to change, set yourself up to work the first stitch. So insert your needle. And loop the new yarn over the needle and finish the stitch with that yarn. Now it'll be really loose at first, so make sure you're holding everything for a stitch or two. And when you have a few stitches complete, go ahead and tie the two ends together to secure it, and we'll weave those in later. So now you have all the tools to be able to knit the length of your cowl, so go ahead and do that. It should measure about 28 and a half inches from your cast on edge, and you want to make sure you complete or you end on a third row. All right, when you have the length of your cowl worked and you're just finishing a third row, the purl row, we're ready to bind off. For this, we'll work a standard knitting bind off. And to do that, you'll knit the first two stitches. Then pass the first loop over the last. So I like to hold on to that loop with my finger so it doesn't slide off too. Then knit the next stitch, pass the first loop over the last, and keep going. When you're all done, fasten off leaving a nice long tail, at least 16 inches, so we can use that to seam the two ends together. And the next thing I recommend doing is blocking. It'll really open up the stitch pattern and make it look more polished and professional. You'll need to wet your cowl first so it's damp but not dripping and pin it into place, stretching it to 14 inches wide and 30 inches long. So I picked up these blocking boards on Amazon, but if you have those athletic flooring tiles, or if your kids have those numbered foam tiles, those will work too. I do, however, really like the grid on these, so I can just count the blocks as I pin. If you wanna give these a try, I'll have the Amazon link in the description. There are a couple different ways of blocking. So if you prefer steam blocking, you can do that too. I tend to like the results best when I wet block, but you can do whatever works best for you. Now I let my cowl dry overnight and I removed the pins and what a big difference a little blocking can make. It really opened up the lace pattern and it looks so much better. The last thing we need to do is weave in the ends from where we added the new skein of yarn. I'm just doing that along the back side of the work.
And when you're done with that, fold it in half so the right sides are facing each other and will seam along the edge. So make sure you're threading the longer of the two ends on your yarn needle for your seam. And honestly, you can do any seam you're comfortable with. I tend to like the whip stitch because it's really quick and it's really easy. And I don't mind how the seam looks on the right side. But again, whatever seaming method you're comfortable with, you like, go ahead and do that. Last up, weave in the remaining ends along the inside of the cowl. And that's all for now, friends. I appreciate you watching and I hope you enjoy knitting this spring and summery cowl. Don't forget the links to where you can view the pattern for free or buy the PDF from my shop are in the description below. And before you go, I'd love it if you subscribe to this channel if you aren't already. I make crochet and knitting tutorials like this all the time, and I'd love to keep inspiring you to make something that'll make you happy. Your support keeps this channel going, and for that, I'm incredibly grateful. Happy knitting, and I'll see you in the next one.